Basic graphing review, focusing on standard form. The equation I will graph is 4x minus 5y equals 16. This equation is in standard form because the x term and y term are both on the left hand side with the constant on the right. The author in chapter 3 likes to continually show you to change this equation to slope intercept form. Yet that actually causes a great deal of additional work. I do not recommend it. Instead, keep the equations in standard form. First, find the x-intercept. The x-intercept occurs on the x-axis where y equals 0. So if I substitute 0 into the equation where y is, I end up with the equation 4x equals 16. As a result, the x-intercept is found by simply dividing 16 by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. The x-intercept is 4. The y-intercept has an x value of 0. So to calculate the y value, I substitute 0 in for x, which leaves me with just 16 on the right and the negative 5 on the left. So I divide 16 by negative 5 and end up with negative 3 and 1 fifth. In most problems you will actually want the decimal version. I'm going to write negative 3.2. Then you come to the y-axis, put a point at negative 3.2, draw yourself a line. You have now graphed the equation 4x minus 5y equals 16. Once again, the author in chapter 3 really likes you to change the equation to slope-intercept form. I do not want you to do this. So this is what his work would look like. He would subtract the 4x from the left. He would divide everything by negative 5. Then he would graph. He would plot negative 3.2. He would use the slope of going up 4. Now it's hard to go up 4 when your y-intercept is a decimal. But if I went up 4, I would go 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I would go over 5. That point would have been the point 5, comma, 0. 0.8. It's very challenging to realize what that is. Instead, please do not, I should say, please do not do the slope-intercept form. Instead, just do standard form, finding your x-intercept and y-intercept. One additional thing that you will be doing in Chapter 3 is shading. So to review that, we would have had an inequality like 4x minus 5y is greater than or equal to uh, 16. I wanted to use the same one as before, but this time with a greater than or equal to. When we have a greater than or equal to, we have to decide which side of the line are we shading, the top or the bottom. So we would do that decision with a test point. Pick a point that is not on your line. In chapter 3, that's going to be the ordered pair 0, 0 consistently, so I just always use it as it's easy arithmetic. I substitute 0 into the inequality. 4 times 0 minus 5 times 0 is 0. I want to know, is that greater than or equal to 16? Well, obviously, 0 is not greater than or equal to 16. That is false. Which means back in chapter 1, I would have shaded where the true side would have been. In chapter 3, we will do the exact opposite. We are going to shade the false side. It won't become apparent until we do some complex problems for why we do that. So shading is opposite than that in chapter 1. We are going to shade the false side. 
we had tested 0, 0, which is that point, and it came out false. That means I am going to shade to the top left. This is the false section. I shade the false section when I am in chapter 3.